we've been talking about you know illusion and the theme for the month is um the tiny mad idea so you know we've been addressing this throughout the whole month today we're specifically focusing on the key term which is uh illusion and it is the the key to salvation is the ability to distinguish between truth and illusion oh yes <laughs> So, um, and you came up with some good definitions uh, earlier today when we were touching base about what illusion is. Why don't you throw those down since you're the one who brought them forward? Sure, yeah. You know, we, we, we say the word illusion all the time in the course, and uh, it's just helpful to have a, a good idea of what that means. So um, I like to classify an illusion as something that depends on something else in order to exist. Mm. So obviously the whole thought system of ego depends on your attention, your belief in it to sustain it, right? Yeah. The course says, uh, illusions disappear when they are recognized for what they are. This is the healing and the remedy. Believe them not and they are gone. So it's your belief that keeps ego's thought system alive because it's illusory, right? Yeah. So we could also say it's something that's not self-sufficient. Um, and then lastly, something that is impermanent or temporary, something that comes and goes or appears and disappears, we could say is an illusion. So it doesn't mean it's not experienced, right? Right. Uh, typically, that's the idea we get when we say something, oh, that's, a, that's an illusion. Uh, ego gets insulted with that statement, right? It's like, well, of course, it's not an illusion. It really happened to me. Yeah. It's like, I'm not saying you didn't experience something. The experience happened but the foundation upon which that experience was created, that's the illusion. Yeah. So a couple examples to give a practical analogy. We use the wave ocean analogy a lot. Uh, a wave is an illusion because a wave is simply something the ocean's doing, right? Yeah. But the analytical labeling mind will see a wave, the crest of a wave undulating in the ocean and say, ah, new definition. That is a new object in space and it's called a wave. So it kind of separates the ocean into two parts. There's waves and there's the ocean. But of course, there's no such thing as a wave. There's just the ocean. And what we call a wave is just something the ocean's doing. Yeah. There is no wave apart from ocean. But there is an ocean without waves, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's very good. And then uh, the last analogy is a, a rope with a knot in it. We could say that a knot is an illusion it's for the same reason as the wave that the knot is just something that rope is doing. There is no knot apart from rope, but you can have a rope without a knot. So the rope is earlier. The rope is the original, right? Yeah. So we are in the same way giving our belief over to mental psychological illusions that don't actually exist apart from our belief in them. And that's what the course is always trying to point out to us. We're totally taking it for granted, believing that what we're seeing is actually there. And of course, it's not really there other than our belief sustaining it, right? Like the snake and the rope analogy. It looks like it's a snake. We're pretty convinced it is. But upon approaching it, we realize that it's not a snake. It's just a rope. So all of the fear and the panic and the stress that we had in approaching it was all an illusion. But we experienced it, but it wasn't real. Yeah. And it immediately goes away once you know it's a rope. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> Completely dissolves. Yeah. Other ways to, just to get at this in different directions is, um, you know, that reality, small r, reality, capital R. Also, you, you know, in your guided meditation, you brought us to what you called the changeless. That which is yeah. changeless, that which is God, that which is forever. There's this... Um, a woman long, long time ago, metaphysician, her name is Emily Cady. And she brilliant, like from the mid 1800s, uh, just absolutely a brilliant mind. And back, I think she was channeling A Course in Miracles before A Course in Miracles ever. <laughs> and she would say, all wow. is God, or it's a lie. And she used God, or it's a lie. <laughs> that's how, That's another way to, you know, to sort of get in there. It's it's a Makes lie. It simple. Yeah. It's, it's, if it's not of God, it's a lie. If it's not of God, it's an illusion. So, um, so our question to you, and let's go deeper because we want to make this 
personal. We want you to be able to think about this and apply this in your own life. So in the chat, um, put in there what you would say illusions are in your world. What are some illusions that you're experiencing in your life? And while you guys do that, we'll give you some context. Um, if you're looking for illusions in your own experience, in your own life, think about anything in your life that, uh, anything in your mind really, that needs defense, right? The Course says anything that needs defense, you do not want. Anything yeah. that needs defense will weaken you because it's an illusion. Illusions will weaken you. So opinions, desires, self-images, and so forth. Um, or we can also look for false beliefs, beliefs that I'm unworthy, right? Mark and I talked about this earlier today. Uh, he brought up the unworthiness belief. And we saw that in, in that belief, I am unworthy. There's really two illusions there if we break it down. And just sticking really close to our definition, something that depends on something else, okay? There's two things in the statement, I'm unworthy, that depend on something else. The belief in unworthiness is an illusion. There's nothing in God's, in God's world that's unworthy, right? That's a, a fabrication of the egoic mind. Yeah. Unworthiness doesn't exist in God's world. And then secondly, there's an I who believes it's unworthy. <laughs> there's a separate self who's claiming that it is unworthy, and that's an illusory I, right? Yeah, yeah. it's really good. Image. It's really good. Yeah, we got some good, good, you guys, this is great. Bills, everything that I am is in everything that after I am is illusion, my personality, feelings of sadness, depression, anxiety, my body, my story, um, aging, paying bills, aging, anything that bows to the belief in separation, the nonstop wow. matter of the ego, fear of getting sick, total illusion, insecurity. I need a relationship. Good. Nice call out. Nice. Uh, I'm unnecessary. Oh, good one, Brandon. Yeah, kidney disease, kidney disease is, is an illusion and the ownership of the my that attaches to that. The past, I have to be what I think is perfect, not having confidence. Oh, there's a good illusion, past and future. Yeah, yeah. The mother of all illusions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you guys get it. <laughs> Sounds like you guys get it, good job, A plus. <laughs> Yeah, We're all passing grades tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really good. Um, course also goes on to say that um, all real pleasure comes from doing God's will. This is be this is because not doing it is a denial of self. So denial of self results in illusions, while correction of the error brings release from them. So I really like this. So not doing God's will is a denial of yourself denial of yourself how good is that man oh this book i'm telling you it's amazing and you know we've been conditioned to deny ourselves. you've been conditioned to put yourself last you've been conditioned to believe a lot of things that take you out of the equation of your joy out of the equation of god's will and i believe god's will is the absolute happiest most fulfilling thing that could ever happen in your life. It would, you know, you'd never have to go to another purpose webinar or a vision, you know, new year program. You would just be like, I just do God's will. <laughs> I just walk in that and it's, it, it's, it's bliss, but it does require, you know, noticing all the ways that, that you have agreed to live an illusory life instead of God's will. And then, you know, people, Aaron, if I can say more, like, then people are like, I don't know what God's will is. I don't know. Then it's sort of this whole, like, I don't know, sort of. That's true. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> but if you just let go of all that stuff, it'll just, I really believe it just will rise up right in the center of your being. Well, it goes back to our lesson this morning, right? God is speaking to me all throughout the day. How do we hear God? In the silence. Yeah. Uh, the Course says, learn to be quiet for his voice is heard in stillness. Yeah. So when we try to do, that's when we get in the way of God's will. Now, everything is God's will, even you being delusional and believing you're separate. 
That's also God's will in the sense that God wants you to have the freedom to explore separation. If you want to believe you're separate, God says, absolutely, my son, be separate as, as separate as you want to be. But <laughs> truthfully, God is the only one doing anything. Uh, I, I made a video a couple weeks ago from a masterclass discussion called God is the all doer, meaning that the flow of life is the only real doer that there is. And I am an extension of that flow, right? I am that flow being lived. So I love this passage so much we just read that it says all real pleasure comes from doing God's will because not doing God's will is a denial of self, capital S. And it is the denial of self, capital S, that creates illusions. And then it says, while correction of the error brings release from them. So really what it's saying is you can only do God's will. And if you do anything else, you really do nothing, right? You're just uh, spinning in circles, not accomplishing, not going anywhere. Yeah. And uh, Mark and I were joking this morning about like a, a practical analogy of, of what this means using that snake in the road example. Imagine if Mark and I are on that road, a dark road, we see the uh, seemingly see a snake and Mark realizes that it's actually just a rope. And he looks over at me and I'm like, ugh, ugh. and he's like, Aaron, what are you doing, man? And I'm like, quiet, I'm, I'm being alpha to scare the snake away so it leaves the path. And Mark is like, Aaron, what are you doing, man? There's no snake there. You're doing nothing, right? I think I'm doing something, but in reality, capital R, what am I actually doing? I'm puffing myself up to intimidate a rope that's inanimate, right? Yeah. So it's like we're always kind of doing that when we're living from ego, we're trying to fulfill a sense of lack that doesn't exist. We're trying to appease unmet desires that can't fulfill us, right? The Course says you're chasing after things you do not want. Um, you're projecting things that don't actually exist. So this is what it means to say all pleasure, all joy, all happiness comes from doing God's will. And what is God's will? Being present in this moment, being quiet and listening. And in that listening, we find we just become that life, that flow. We don't have to think about it, predict it, analyze it. What does God want me to do? That's yeah. ego. You'll never figure it out. Just be that. And in an effortless way, you just become that will in motion. It moves so you. simple. Yeah. I got to go back to that story though and tell the truth because the way <laughs> <laughs> we reversed it. <laughs> the way it came, I know you did a good reversal. The, the way it came out was Aaron was telling the story and going, Mark, you see the snake and you're, and he's sort of imitating me being the alpha male there fish. I go, Aaron, if I thought a rope was a snake, I'd be like, ah, I would like be what? in circles in total fear, screaming at the highest voice possible. So, um, which also works. Cause then I would say, Mark, what are you doing, man? Exactly. You're screaming at nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're afraid of nothing. <laughs> yeah. We're such a good balance because Aaron, you always take us like out into that amazing place of, of, of spiritual freedom. And I take it into the application of your life. So let's go to that direction just for a moment and think about the closest people in your life, your husband, your wife, the ones that you're writing about on the Facebook, the ones that are pushing your buttons, the illusion about them is what is in your mind and how you're, what you're believing and thinking and the way that you're creating them to be. All of that is an illusion. And anything other than looking at, like at the most ultimate space, anything other than looking at that person and seeing them as the light and the love and the innocence of God, all of that is an illusion. So that's where the Course is so brilliant and adamant about using our brothers and our sisters as our reflection, yeah. as that which we go into salvation with together. We go hand in hand into this remembering, into the, the returning home, the kingdom of heaven, because as we set them free, we ourselves become free. So this really is something to practice. When you're beating them up in your head when you've got a judgment or, you know, and wherever you land, what, again, we always say from the smallest to the greatest, the people, what you're thinking about them, if it is not holy and beautiful and of spirit, it's an illusion. 
It's not true. And that is pretty darn on the field. <laughs> the field man. I, I love I love that though, because we we had this other quote um about perception, the way we see other people and we project our illusions onto them. Yeah. And the course has this amazing line that says, um, what perception sees, and remember perception is the seeing from a separated state. When you believe you're separate, that's called perception. When you know you're one, that's vision. So it says what perception sees and hears appears to be real because it permits into awareness only what conforms to the wishes of the perceiver. Then it says, this leads to the world of illusions and a world which needs constant defense precisely because it is not real. What is real needs no defense. Yeah. Oh, that's so, so good. And, you know, every one of you knows how real it can feel because you're like, oh no, that person really is an addict. Oh, it feels real. Oh yeah. Oh, that person really is a whatever. Fill in the blank. You're so certain. And when we say to you, just get, lay that illusion down, man. Just let it go. Turn to, it's like, I can't. Like, like it's a, it will fight. It will grab you. That's all cool. That's fine. It just shows you how strong an illusion can feel, how real it can feel, but it is not, it is not, it is not. Yes. And that's the moment to become quiet in those moments where you're triggered and you're like, damn, this feels real. Like, how can this not be real? It feels so real. Go back to that truth because that's what my, that's what my perception is only allowing me to experience. Mm -hmm. It's filtering only this, this emotional reaction. It's not allowing me to feel love. It's not allowing me to feel oneness and peace. So of course it feels real because that's all I'm allowed to experience right now. Yeah. So this is the nature of illusions. It's like, how can that which is unreal appear to be so real? Yeah. The answer is only by borrowing reality from that which is real, which is you. So illusions have to borrow your reality to appear real to you. So that's why as soon as you stop believing in them, they disappear. That's so damn good. <laughs> <laughs>